Good morning and happy Mother's Day. I had a request last night from one of the students who's been working on the Jack Pine painting program that I have uh, right now for my Eventbrite students. Um, they wanted to get a little bit more instruction with helping them to create the tree and to do the grass. So that is totally cool. Um, this is going to be bonus footage that's only available to the students who have registered for the Jack Pine painting class. This was the painting that we did in the original class. Obviously this is already done. So I'm going to be doing a new one for you. And I've already gone ahead and prepared the sky and the water. And now we're going to proceed with the tree and the grass. Okay, so first things first, um, I think last time we already had done the trunk. So I'm going to put the trunk in again, just to show you uh, the basics of how you can put that through. Um, as you can see, this picture here is bigger than the one that I did in your class. This is a 9 by 12 and I'm actually using canvas paper this time around. Um, there are lots of different brands of the canvas paper out there. It is um, a very inexpensive tool to use and it gives you the ability to do lots of different paintings and not worry about so much about cost and as well because it's paper they don't take up a lot of room in your house. So uh, if you're still in the learning stages, definitely that's something that you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my burnt umber. I'm going to grab a little bit of white just to lighten it up a little bit. And we'll start here. On the tree, or the uh, tree trunk, sorry. You'll find if you've used um, regular canvas boards before and stretch canvas, you'll find the texture of this paper a little bit different. It takes a little bit to get used to. It's a little more coarse and it grabs the paint. So sometimes when you're trying to blend, it's a little bit of a challenge but it's not an impossible task. So we'll go up here, fill our tree in. Now, if you watch the um, other video first, you'll see that actually this time around, we're putting the tree in after the sky. The first time we put the tree in first and then the sky around it. There's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. Both ways work quite well. Now what I'm doing for the front part, if you remember on the other video, I had mixed a bit of yellow because we have some sunshine here. I know you can't see it in the picture, but we have some sunshine. If you look at your picture, your reference picture on the tree trunk in this area. So we're going to simulate that sunshine coming through and put the lighter bit on this side of the tree. And that's an important part of your composition because it's that sunlight that the eye is attracted to and that becomes our focal point of the painting. So you want to try and get that in as well as possible. And it's up to you how yellow you want to make it. And as you can see right now, it's basically there's a definite line in between the two. So what we do then is I've added more of the burnt umber to my brush and I'm going to come back through where the two lines meet. And basically, we're just blending them together. 
I'm going to do a video later on, possibly, if not this week, next week. Um, it's going to be about the blending process in a little more detail. I'm using oil paints. Those of you who are using acrylic, the process is a little bit different because your paints dry much faster than mine. Um, I do encourage all my students, if you've never tried oil, definitely give it a try. It's not as expensive as you think. Um, and it allows you to do some different things that you can't do very, as well or as easily um, with the acrylic. That's my opinion, of course. There are people who use acrylic every day and they say that they have no problems doing the same techniques. Um, for me, it's a lot more difficult and I just really like oil paint. So it's what I stick with and it's important that you stick with what you really enjoy. I'm actually going to put, I didn't in the first video, but I'm going to put some of the sunshine highlights up top here too. Just because I think it's going to just give our artwork a little bit extra. Okay, there. So we've got our tree in. Now, the last time I was explaining about brushes, and I'll go through that again just because sometimes people are confused about what brush to use. And I'm going to show you where is my brush that I use. So I'm going to use this guy. I'm going to show you now, when it comes to the branches, you can see how the branches in your reference picture are quite thin. And I'll show you this one as well, that they're quite thin. So you basically you have a choice. You can use a very thin brush, which is what we would automatically assume would be the proper brush for this. Your second option is to use a brush that has a flat top. And it's important that it's a fairly new brush because then the bristles are going to be closer together and they're going to give you that nice tight line. And I'll show you the difference here. I'm going to use both of them and show you that you can get the exact same thing. So I'm just loading up my brush with a burnt umber. And first I'm going to use what you would traditionally consider a brush for the details or the smaller areas which would be this guy here. And I'll go in and I'll create a brush, or a, sorry, a branch over here. Okay. With this one. And then I'll go in, and this is actually, this brush is actually my preference to use. And the reason being, because it's firmer, I can press and get a much tighter line than what I did with the other brush. Now again, like I said earlier, it's all a matter of personal preference. Some people are going to like the smaller brush and other people are going to like the brush that I'm using currently, which is a little bit bigger. So let's just put some branches in and you don't have to put all the branches that you see in your picture. You can pick and choose which branches you want. And you can also pick and choose where you put the branches. You don't have to put them exactly where you see them in your reference picture. So I'm just kind of picking spots where I think some branches would go. And this is a jack pine. So a jack pine, if you've ever seen them in nature, they're a very um, interesting tree. They have a lot of character. Their branches are very wild looking. They kind of go here, there, and everywhere. And they grow uh, pretty much all over Ontario. I thought they were just um, indigenous to the northern areas, but I did some research and found out that no, in fact, uh, you can see them in southern Ontario as well. Although they are a much more uh, prolific in the northern areas. So now, as I said in the uh, other video up here, as you get further up, you can see how I haven't actually put any more paint on my brush. I started down here with a fresh brush and a fresh loading of paint. 
which made this area here quite dark with the branches. And then as I went up, you can see how the paint got lighter and lighter and lighter. So naturally, now as things are further away, as we all know, they do get lighter in the distance. So I didn't even have to adjust that. It just naturally happened as I was painting. And these are the kinds of things that you learn as you go along. They're just uh, happy accidents that you discover, especially if you're not afraid to try new techniques. And you can put the little branches in if you want. And again, I'm still using this, this flat brush for it. Certainly, if your preference is the skinnier, thinner brush, you can definitely do that. Use that one. I'm not going to put too many in because once we put our foliage on, a lot of these little branches are going to be covered. You won't see them. But it's kind of fun to do. And it's fun to play around and experiment. Put a couple down here too. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we'll leave that for a bit and we'll do our grass. I am going to choose, I have a lot of brushes here to choose from, and when I do the grass, I can do again a super skinny brush. I can even use one of those flat ended brushes and just do each individual blade if I want to. Um, it's, to me, it's very tedious. What I prefer to do is use a brush like this that has the ends. It, it's almost like some, some artists would throw them away at this point, but I, I love them when they're like this because they give you the extra texture. You can see how the bristles are separated. This is going to give you, when you go across, if you use a nice light touch, it will give you the blades of grass. And I'm going to show you how that works right now. So I'm not going to actually use green. I've got sap green in your list. You can definitely use the green if you wish. I'm going to use a blue that I have over here. And I'm going to mix yellow into it. And that will give me green. And I can control what kind of green that is. This is a little bit, well, actually, it's not too bad. I'm going to use it right now as is, and we'll see how it is. So we're going to do the brighter green. And as you can see, as I'm going up, it's giving that wispy look of the grass. And you don't want to use the same color all the way through. And that's just simply because when you look at your reference paper, your picture, um, you can see that the grass has different shades and different colors all the way through. There's different greens, there's little bits of brown, there's even little bits of almost orange in there. So you want a ver variety of colors on your brush and you want to vary where you're putting those colors. So I just added some of the burnt umber into the green that was already on my brush and that's adding some darks down here now and I just put some yellow on there a little bit more now you would lift this up so that you can reach down to the bottom when you're working um, I'm just working here I'm filming and I'm painting and I'm talking, so I have a lot going on, so I'm just going to stick with where the canvas is right now. So I want the yellow in front because that's where the sun is. The sun, if you look at your image, the sun is actually coming from this side. So it's hitting this edge of the tree, and then it's also going to hit the front edges of the grass. A lot of people will use white for their highlights of the sun. Definitely 
If that's something that you prefer, you can do that. I just added a little bit of white into my yellow. If you look, however, at your reference images, you'll see that light is not a pure white, that there's usually a color to it. A little bit more grass here. Over here, there's quite a bit of light on this side. I'm gonna add a little bit of green to it too. It's getting a little too yellow for my taste. And go over the top of your water because then that shows the perspective. It shows that your grass is ahead of the water and the water is in the background. So you should have a little bit of wisps of grass coming up you don't want to make that heavy. You want to have that transparency so you can see through. Because in life, that's it's pretty much the way you see things. Where the light is, it's lighter, it's more transparent. And where the shadows are, it's much darker and much more opaque. And you can't see through. So now in the back side of the tree, is more shadow. If you look at your image, you'll see that the light's not getting through as much because once we put these lower branches in, it won't be there. So we'll use darker colors. And I'm not going to put this all the way through to the top here because a lot of this is going to be covered when we put the branch foliage in. A lot of this grass is going to get covered anyways. So when you're doing your artwork, think about that. It saves you a lot of time and heartache. I see people work so, so hard on getting something perfect. And then the next part of the image, um, it just covers up everything that they just work so hard on. Uh, I've done it myself, actually. So uh, unless it's just an exercise where you just really want to work on that so that you can feel more confident in it, I wouldn't worry about it too often. So I just added more blue into what was on my brush because I felt like it was getting too brown and now we've got some green coming back in again. Okay, I think that's as far as I'm going to go there. I'm going to go back over to this side and put more in over here. Again, a lot of this is going to be covered when I put the foliage in on this branch. But I'm just going to put some back here. A little bit of the light again. And I haven't changed my brush. When you work with oils, if you're really careful about how much paint you load up on your brush and you're working in an area like this that has variance of color, you really don't need to change out your brush or wash your brush at all or even wipe it off. But again, as you practice more often, you become a little more efficient at these small things. I'm going to wipe that down now because I want some of that dark off. I'm going to put some of the lighter color back in. There we go. So you look at grass, it's really quite intricate. Intricate. It has little bits and pieces in between where there's shadow and then there's areas where there's highlights. Okay, so that's basically your grass. And now the last part today we'll work on is putting the foliage onto your tree. This is a pine tree and I like to use a fan brush to simulate the pine tree needles. I've got three different kinds of fan brushes. Um, it depends where you go. Sometimes you get them fairly inexpensive. I'm pretty sure this was either a dollar store or at Michael's and it was very inexpensive. The majority of the better ones, this is a pretty good one. Are really quite expensive but if you can afford to get one at least one of these into uh, your toolbox then they're a great thing to have 
So for today, I think I'm going to use, because it's a bigger composition, I'm going to use the larger one. And I've selected all of these because they do have, some are, this one's a little tighter, this one's a little wider, so they do give you different effects. So I, I'm going to use my palette knife this time because I need to mix up a little bit more color for the green. Take my blue. I'm going to use a different yellow this time with it. Mix that in. I have a lot of paint on my palette and I'm one of these frugal painters, I like to just use what I have on my palette rather than putting out more and more and more paint. So I've got a basic green. I'm going to take some brown. I'm going to add it in to make it darker over here. So I've got two different shades going on. I'm going to start at the back of the tree where it's darker and I'm just going to load up the one side of the brush with the darker green kind of bluish brownish green back here because there's shadow and I'm just using this edge and I'm just kind of dabbing it in you dab it in very lightly you see how you've got these little random bits that simulate the needles of the tree. It's really quite cool, actually. Now, of course, there's lots of different techniques when you're painting and getting these kinds of uh, effects on your composition. So definitely, I say, go ahead and explore other things that you've discovered along the way. This is something that was taught to me a long, long time ago when uh, I was 16. And even with everything that I've learned when it comes to putting in this part of the pine tree, this is really, for me, the nicest way of doing it. It gives you some really nice effects. So you're going to put, this is just the back end of the branch. This here again this is the back part of the branch that doesn't get a lot of the Sun so I'm going to go along and put all the darks in everywhere that I see that there's shadow and the shadow of a tree is generally closer to the trunk of the tree because the Sun doesn't generally get into that area so whichever branch you decide that you want to have foliage on Put in your darker foliage. Put a little bit up here. And I'm using a very light touch on this. You just have to, if your, your brush is loaded up well, you just kind of really just very lightly touch the branch. Okay. So now I'm going to use the other side of the brush, which doesn't have any paint on it yet. And I'm going to put in a lighter green. I'm going to start with the medium green going out here. Comes out. And because our paint is wet, my paint underneath here is still wet, it's going to pick up some of that color too. So it's going to lighten it because there's white underneath and blue underneath. And that's fine. Once uh, the more you do this, the more you understand how all that works. I'm going to put some of the lighter green over here as well. To kind of accentuate the branches. This one's going here. More green. This one here. Kind of dab it in and have fun with it. 
The only trick to this, I would say, is less is more. So you don't want to overdo it because then the branch just like, it ends up looking like just one big blob. As you can see when I'm dabbing, I let the light show through so you can still see the sky and the water in behind, which is when you look at your reference image, you can see the sky and the water in behind the branches of your tree. So you want to keep that in mind when you're doing this, that you don't get it too heavy, especially at the beginning. Because once it's on there, it's really hard to uh, take it out again. Okay. Some up over here. I'm going to leave this branch without any foliage on. Because there are a few like that in the image. Put it right here. And now I'm just going to go in and take my yellow onto my brush I'm using the brighter yellow and it's okay actually I'm going to wipe off some of the green I've got on here I want that a little bit brighter some of the green off and then just go right into my yellow again there we go that's what I was looking for keep in mind when we're painting like this it's wet on wet and so everything when you're touching another color with the color that's on your brush it is going to blend on your canvas so keep that in mind when you're mixing your colors a little bit over here I'm going to add a little bit of white to it as we get up here because there's really nothing impeding the light coming into this branch. So it'll be nice and bright. And this one too. And then over here, put some of the brighter yellow in here as well. So as you can see now, it definitely you, we've got the light coming into this side and the shadow is over on this side here. The only other thing I'm going to add is a tiny little bit of the red. If you look at your reference image, there is some orange in there and the orange is actually um, the seed pods. Seed pods have that orangey reddish color so I'm not actually mixing orange because with the red and the yellow together on the canvas it gives you that orange hue and I'm just going to put it in very lightly through here a little bit up here there there you have it that is your jack pine. So I hope you enjoy the uh, supplemental video that we just finished off and uh, that you were able to pick up a few more tips as far as doing the grass and doing the branches of your jack pine tree. Um, I look forward to doing more of these videos for you. The next one I have planned is going to be a mountain scene um, that will be uploaded to Eventbrite hopefully early next week. So this is awesome for me, and I am so glad that you are having a lot of fun doing these. Thanks very much, and uh, have a wonderful Mother's Day.